All right, welcome back. My name is Christine Richards, and I'm the research director for Z Prime. And we're thrilled to have with us right now Scott Henneberry, who is the vice president for Smart Grid Strategy with Schneider Electric. So thanks for joining us, Scott. My pleasure. Thank you. So we talked a little bit in the panel about the grid of the future. And do you want to take a little bit of time to expand on that, where you see the grid of the future going? And you know, what is it going to take to really make it happen? Okay, sure. Um, first of all, it's, it's highly dependent upon where in the world you are. Yeah, absolutely. And so if we think about the U.S. and we want to focus on the U.S., uh, w what we see going forward is a hybrid of uh, a maintenance of central station power, mm -hmm. but, but really no new major big central stations going forward. We'll have life extensions on the, one, the ones that we have, and a lot of the new generation is going to be distributed. Mm -hmm. So that could be uh, conventional generation rotating engines. It could be photovoltaic cells on people's rooftops. It could be wind farms, but there's going to be many, many more distributed what's, what's called on the edges of the grid. And the challenge will be to sort of integrate all that together. But the, the benefit is going to be uh, lower carbon, higher resiliency, Absolutely. and eventually, not right away, but eventually lower prices as the variable costs go down from renewables. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit more about the resiliency piece and how having a more distributed grid along with the centralized generation is going to help out with that? Sure. The, um, so we think uh, in terms of microgrids now, and we've, we've always had uh, protected grids for certain customers. So for example, hospitals and data centers have always had backup generation. They've always had UPSs. But those have tended to exist in an, in an either on or an off fashion. Yeah. When there was an issue on the grid, they would disconnect and run off of their generators. Mm -hmm. But now what we're seeing is that there are more and more people interested in using some of these distributed energy resources that we've been talking about. Sometimes that's generation, sometimes that's energy storage. And they do use it in an islanded fashion as before, but they will also now, we're moving more and more towards a parallel operation so that they can decide, do I want to use power from my solar cells right now? Mm -hmm. Do I want to put that into energy storage depending upon what the price is? Or do I want to ship it back out on the grid and sell it? It's also very much a function of uh, regions. So some, yeah. some things are allowed in some regions and some are not. Yeah. Uh, so that's sort of the technology side of it. I would also say one of the biggest challenges is for the regulators to get it right. Mm -hmm. Because in, in many parts of the US, for example, utilities are not allowed to do what I just said because they're, they're prohibited by regulations from doing that. Now, the good news is that regulators in, in many parts of the US, California, Arizona, New York, Hawaii, are really trying to get ahead of the game and, uh, and allow the business models to exist that will allow the utilities to implement the kinds of things we were talking about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some of the stuff we've been talking about, I mean, it, it seems so far into the future. I mean, a lot of these things are going to have to evolve. I mean, what do you see in the near term as some of the major challenges and opportunities? So we see a lot of interest right now in the implementation of the microgrids that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. and, that, and those are generally done on a campus type of basis. So the campus could be a hospital campus. It could be an, an office camp campus. Um, it could be military-style campus. It mm -hmm. could be a real university-style campus, but that's where we're seeing it. And, and th there's a lot of interest in that right now. We have a lot of interest in piloting various types of energy storage and experimenting, understanding how that integrates with the grid. So we'll see this in 2015. Yeah. And we see a lot of regulatory activity. So we want to understand and, and keep up with what's going on in the different parts of the, of the, uh, of the country. Um, Regionally, we'll see a continued growth in photovoltaic, particularly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but it's a function of sort of the uh, incumbent cost of power in those regions. So we'll continue to see growth in the states where we've seen it, the southwest of the U.S., Hawaii, New Jersey for some strange reason, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and North Carolina. Um, and, we, and we will continue to see that. But, yeah. but even then, with the investment tax credit in limbo right now, the, politically in mm -hmm. the US, there's a question about how strongly we're going to continue to see some, some of that. Yeah. So I mean, given all these changes going on, I mean, what do you see for, for Schneider Electric in 2015? Oh, Schneider Electric is very well positioned because we uh, are quite familiar. We're really the worldwide global specialists in energy management mm -hmm. in terms of dealing with end users. So we have, we're very focused around en energy efficiency in the, and helping customers buy power in the least cost way. At the same time, we understand the supply side. We work with utilities all over the globe. We have automation businesses. We have 
circuit breaker and conventional clickety-clack type businesses. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about the smart grid going forward is that the smart grid will require the supply and the demand side to interact with each other in ways that have never been required before. And the supply and demand really don't understand each other. Mm -hmm. And we understand both. So our ability to facilitate those new relationships and, and help those two interact together is where we see our future. Well, great. Well, congratulations. It sounds like a lot of good stuff coming up. So yeah, thanks for joining us, Scott. All right. Thank you.